failure are marginally close to one another, so close to one another, any one of the things can be a difference maker. Any one of the things can change the game in your favor, can move your audience to become the apostles and the advocates of your proposition, to get them to vote for you, to become a customer or a client, to stay a customer or client, to give you a raise, a promotion, whatever it is. The first word is motivate. So you think, well, okay, I'm going to motivate you. I'm going to motivate. No, 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 no. Job one is your intention before their attention. That's the key. Because you know why? They see that the second you walk in the room. They see that before you speak the first word. Before you start with your PowerPoints and your decks and all your information, they see that attention. You know what it's called? Authenticity. They see whether or not you're congruent, whether your feet, tongue, heart, and wallet are going in the same direction. And if it isn't, guess what? You get the horse running in the wrong direction. I don't care how good your facts and figures are. You're in trouble. So the first thing you have to do is get your intention congruent. And what does you do with that? You think about attitude. Attitude is so important. Attitude's a difference maker. We all have very similar aptitudes, but it's the attitude that can change the whole thing. You know, you see somebody's perseverance or passion or tenacity, quiet and soft, hard and loud, it doesn't matter. But that's an important quality because you know there will be failure along the way of the journey. You know there will be bumps in the road. You know it's inevitable. And that person has to get up. You know, a souffle only rises once, but you can rise more than that. So you want to see the person can get up, can overcome failure and the vicissitudes of life and business. And you don't want to be in a partnership or a business or a vendor to that person that doesn't see it that way. Now, here's the one I'd love you to just one little trick to do. Stop thinking of the person when you go into the room as a customer, client, or patron. They protect their groin and their wallet. Think of them as an audience, and audiences expect experiences. You aim for their heart. That's where hits are born. Flops are born here. Hits are born here. So you want to have a hit. You want to get that person to act on your cause, for your product, for your business you want them to join, to become a partner, whatever it is, whatever's in your eye as the beholder, you want them to do that, that's where you have to aim. And you have to think of them as an audience. You have to grok it. It has to be part of it. And when you think of them as an audience, you have to get them get their attention. Always think of them as an audience and venerate the idea that you have a story and you can put your information like a Trojan horse into that story and move their hearts and then it'll move their feet in their wallet. If you are in your proposition that you're going to tell a story, you have to understand you're not in a monologue. You're in a dialogue. Nobody in the world today, especially in your new technology world, wants to be a passenger. They want to be a participant. Your job is to make them a participant, to make them interact with you to be an empathetic listener. If you're a teller of a story, make sure you're listening. Look and see if they're nodding, they're listening, they're involved. I recognize, acknowledge them, engage them. There's two reasons for that. They want to be a participant, and the second reason is they metabolize the information completely differently when they're active with it, when they participate, when they, I pardon the expression, sing along, clap, laugh, get up, do anything. Whatever you can do to create that interactivity, even if it's subtle, by recognizing they're doing something, by responding to it, by getting them to pitch, catch, pitch, catch, putting them in the boat with you, will change the way they hold the information that's so important and vital to you. Content C, the last one. It's anywhere. It's everywhere, sir. Use any story. Just, just change the emotional palette of where in the room you're in. Just tell any story, anything to create an emotional bond. It isn't about telling this exact story for that same subject about the exact need you want or with those numbers and facts. It's any story that creates that emotional base. That's the key. So what does it have to have? Conflict, challenge, and resolution. Just every part of your life has that. Everything in your life has that. And there are many sources. Your own true story about who you are. Observe story, books, television, movies, news, anything. All you're using for is a Trojan horse to move people because you're using that to create an emotional palette. It isn't about telling a story about exactly your product. Could be, but it doesn't have to be.